in this session we will be doing problems from assignment 4 and 5 which covers the chapters on uh, virtual work and motion of particles i will be doing two problems from uh, virtual work and three problems from motion of particles so the first problem is question number 8 from assignment 4 the problem involves a screw and four beams which are massless and all of length L. The beams form a square. So what we have here is that we have a screw which has a pitch P. By pitch P, what I mean is that a rotation of 2 pi will lead to a change in length which will be equal to P. And now what we have here is we have 4 beams of length L which form a square. So because this forms a square, we know that this angle here is 45 degrees. Because this is a square, we know that the angle here is 45 degrees. Now, there is a weight W which is hanging at the lower end. The question was to find the torque gamma, torque gamma that had to be applied in order to balance this weight W. Okay, so how do we approach this problem when dealing with this in using the principle of virtual work? First, we look at the virtual displacements. The virtual displacement that will happen is first though you will have a delta theta at the screw and the delta theta at the screw will change this displacement will change this displacement y of the weight w. So first let us figure out how to relate delta theta and a change in the displacement of y delta y all right so let me assume that the distance y the distance y given here can be written down as y is equal to 2 small y where small y is given by these vertical distances what is the relation of this y and the length of this screw which will be given by x. As you can see that the triangle here is a right angle triangle with 45 degrees, y is exactly equal to x. Now what would be the change in x if I slightly rotate the screw by delta theta? As we know the pitch is p, any change of delta theta will lead to a change in x which will be a change in this entire length of the screw okay now let me call the length of the screw capital x all right so change in the length of the screw would be given by p delta theta by 2 pi. So this will be delta x. All right. Now, what we need is delta capital Y, which will be 2 into delta Y. So we have small y is equal to small x. And we know that 2y is equal to 2x. And this is capital Y, this is capital X, delta in the total vertical distance will be equal to delta of X, which as you can see is given by P delta theta divided by 2 pi. So now we have a relation between the virtual displacement 
of the weight w and a virtual displacement delta theta which will be there for the screw so now we will apply the principle of virtual work the principle of virtual work is that the sum of virtual work at each external force will be equal to zero so now that we have calculated the virtual displacements let me multiply it by the external forces so the first external force is the torque the virtual displacement for the torque is delta theta so i have gamma delta theta the other external work external force is the weight w which will be multiplied by delta y and this has to be equal to 0 notice that i have not put in the sign here let us just have a look at what the sign should be in this diagram what is going to happen is that when i apply a torque the torque is going to reduce the y so that the weight gets pulled up so an increase in theta will actually reduce the y and from that you can understand that y is actually in the vertical direction and it is opposite to the direction of the force and hence you will have a negative sign here all right so we have the principle of virtual work sum of virtual works is zero let us go ahead and use this equation to replace delta y i have gamma delta theta minus w minus w p delta theta by 2 pi is equal to 0 and hence I have the final solution which is gamma is equal to p w by 2 pi all right the next problem is question 14 from assignment 4 this involves a double pendulum this involves a double pendulum as you can see there are two beams and at the end of the second beam you have an external force f also the beams are massive so the beams have mass m1 and m2 with respect to the vertical they are making angles theta1 and theta2 the problem that was there in the assignment was only to find out what the equation of virtual work would give you so we have to find the virtual displacements get the ex external forces and just write down the equation for the principle of virtual work all right what are the external forces here the external forces are the weight of the masses m1 and m2 which will be acting at the center of mass and the external force f which is acting at the end of the second beam as you can see here so what will be the virtual displacement the virtual displacement will be the change in the angle theta 1 by delta theta 1 and the change in the angle theta 2 by delta theta 2 so in order to get the virtual displacement which will be distances let us also write down what the length of this beam is the lengths of these beams are given by l1 and l2 all right so what we now first need is the virtual displacement that will be there for the weight of mass m1 let me go in a little more detail about what exactly the displacement will be as you can see if i have a straight line of length l which is making an angle theta and I apply a small displacement delta theta what is going to happen is that you will have some change which will be perpendicular to this alright so what will be this change this change will be 
L delta theta. So as it is infinitesimal, we can take this. All right. So now what I have is I have a small displacement L delta theta and this is making an angle. You can figure this out yourself. It is very simple. This is the thing. So I have a length L delta theta. So in the x direction, I have L delta theta cos of theta and in the vertical direction, I have L delta theta sin of theta. Now that we have figured this out, we can easily apply this on this problem at all the points. All right. The first point is the position of the center of mass, which is L1 by 2 along this line, right? So in this case, what we'll have is the length is L1 by 2 and the angle is theta 1. So I'll just write down the diagram will be L1 by 2 theta 1 and the displacements will be in the x direction I will have L1 by 2 delta theta 1 cos of theta 1 in the y direction I will have L1 by 2 delta theta 2 sin theta 1 sin theta 1 right now let us go over to the next mass for the next mass also with respect to this point at the, joint. at the joint I can understand that this is exactly similar to the problem we just looked at only the angle has changed and become theta 2 and the length has changed and become L2 by 2 so I can just straight away write down the displacement in the x direction will be given by L2 by 2 delta theta 2 cos of theta 2 and in the y direction it will be L1 by L2 by 2 delta theta 2 sin of theta 2 and in the same way with respect to this joint at the point where the force external force F is applied I would have in the x direction the whole length L2 delta theta 2 cos theta 2 y it will be L2 delta theta 2 sin theta 2 ok the reason I wrote all of this down is that actually the net virtual displacement for the weight of mass m2 and for the external force f will have to take into consideration the fact that delta theta 1 has also happened so not only will you have a displacement with respect to the joint but you'll also have to consider the displacement of the joint all right so what will happen in that case so let me just plug in the displacement of the joint also which will also be important the displacement of the joint is simply l1 delta theta 1 cos theta 1 l2 delta theta 1 l1 delta theta 1 sin theta 1 all right so let me start writing down the principle of virtual work first i will have m1 g and the corresponding virtual displacement for this point which is given here the only relevant quantity here is the y displacement which is L1 L1 by 2 delta theta 1 sin theta 1 alright for the mass M2 I will have to add first the displacement for the joint and then the displacement for the point itself so that will be only in the y direction now right so what I will do is m2g l1 delta theta 1 sin theta 1 plus l2 by 2 delta theta 2 sin theta 2 
all right and now for the last thing which is the force f f is at the end and you will have to add the contributions from both the motion of the joint and the motion of the last point of the beam which will be given by now it's in the x direction now it's not the sine part it's the x direction part you will have l1 delta theta 1 cos of theta 1 plus l2 delta theta 2 cos of theta 2 as you can see again i have done the same thing as the previous problem i have not put in the signs let's again have a look at this a increase in delta theta is actually going to move take a take the y in the upward direction which is opposite to the direction of the force so in both these cases i will have a negative sign and the displacement delta theta 1 delta theta 2 are in the same direction as the application of the force so here i will have plus and now this to complete the principle of virtual work has to be equated to zero you can simplify this and this is exactly the answer this is exactly what was demanded so what we'll do now is write down the coefficient for delta theta 1 and delta theta 2 so that will come out to be f l1 cos of theta 1 minus m 2 g l1 sin theta 1 minus m1 g l1 by 2 sin theta 1 delta theta 1 and i will have f l2 cos theta 2 minus m2 g l2 by 2 sin theta 2 multiplied by delta theta 2 this will be equal to 0 so since now since delta theta 1 and delta theta 2 are both independent their coefficients will have to be equal to 0 and hence we get the equation f will be equal to m1 by 2 plus m2 g tan of theta 1 and also from the coefficient of delta theta 2 f will be equal to m2 m2 by 2 g tan of theta 2 since f in both these equations are equal we can actually simplify this further and get a relation between the thetas as you see what I, what i'll get is tan of theta 2 will be equal to m1 plus m2 m1 by 2 plus m2 divided by m2 tan of theta 1 tan of theta 2 will be equal to m1 by 2 plus m2 divided by m2 by 2 tan of theta 1 so you can see here that the ratio of tan theta 2 and tan, tan theta 1 is independent of f even though the magnitude actually will depend on, on f as you can see from the above two equations let us move over to the assignment 5 which contains problems from motion of particles so the first question will be question 6 from assignment 5 this is a fairly simple question but we will get to learn how to use constraints the problem consists of a small block of mass m being kept on a larger wedge of mass capital M. What is going to happen now is that 
the mass the block is going to move along the slope of the wedge so what we have to do is find out the relationship between the coordinates which will be enforced because of this motion all right let us first define the coordinates of the masses small m and capital m so what i'll do is this coordinate let me call as x2 this coordinate this coordinate let me call as this coordinate will be x1 and the vertical co coordinate here is given by y2 and the position of the wedge is is y1 okay so as you can see the wedge is not leaving the floor and you can see that y1 will have to be equal to 0 always the interesting motion is actually the motion of the block m now what is going to happen is that since it is always going to lie on the slope you can you, you can see that its motion x and the x2 and y2 are going to be related through this equation this is theta right so if this fellow moves down this line what is going to happen is any motion in the future will be like x2 prime or something now x2 prime minus x1 which is this this lower end divided by any position y2 of the block m will have to depend on this angle theta because it's always going to move on that slope so this will be given by tan of theta and this is going to be a constant because the shape of the wedge isn't changing so we have two constraints we have x2 minus x1 is equal to okay constant into y2 and the first constraint is y1 equal to 0 so just to be consistent this is going to be negative so that we have all the edges which are positive and it gives us tan theta okay so this is these are the constraints of the problem and this is as you can see you can match with the solution next we look at problem 12 from assignment 5 in this problem what we have is we have a rope which is lying on the floor this rope has a mass density lambda x which is given by x what is happening is that this is actually on a rough surface so since it is on a rough surface there is a frictional force which is always going to act now if i set up this rope in motion moving with a constant velocity there will be a continuous force i will have to apply so that it actually counters the frictional force okay so our job in the problem is to find out that if i have applied a force and that force will go down the line along the rope what is the tension at some point x okay first so let me solve the problem in the way ki what is the total force I, I might be applying so the total force that i'll be applying will depend on firstly what is the total mass of the system now the mass of the system is simply given by x dx the length of the rope let me assume to be l no it, it's l in the problem now x here actually has the dimensions of mass by length and dx has the dimensions of length so this is consistent and this is going to give us x square by 2 which will give me l square by 2 and then the total weight that will be acting will be l square by 2 into g this will cause a normal reaction which will be equal to l square by 2 into g and 
this will lead to a frictional force in the opposite direction of the motion which will be f frictional which is mu l2 g by 2 all right now what is going to happen is like in order to go to a point x let us look at a small unit of this rope any small unit will be acted by acted on by three forces firstly there will be a tension which will be acting in this direction there will be another tension which is acting on this direction and there will be the frictional force which is in the opposite direction of the motion so what is the frictional force the frictional force will be the mass the same thing that we did above but here since it's a small unit let us call that length only dx so i will have the mass which is x dx multiplied by g which this will give me the normal reaction and mu of this will give me the frictional force which is acting so if i look at this properly what i will see is that i have the equilibrium equation basically will say that x t x plus dx plus mu g x dx will be equal to t of x all right so i can write this down as t x plus dx minus t of x which will be equal to mu g x dx minus all right now because there's an infinitesimal change in the uh, tension let me write this down as dt x is equal to minus mu g x dx all right so by integrating this equation i will be able to find out what the tension is but there is the issue of limits which needs to be sort out properly so what is actually happening is i have a rope all right and then this is zero okay and x is in this direction so as i go down the line the density is increasing now what is going to happen is i have a t at zero and i want to find a t at x and in the process i'll go from 0 to x all right so i have an integration dt of x which goes from t of 0 to t of x and on the right hand side i have this length which is going from 0 to x minus mu g x let me just create a dummy variable x prime and dx prime so integrating this i will have t of x minus t of 0 is equal to minus mu g x prime square by 2 0 to x i have minus of mu g x square by 2 you may remember that t of 0 is actually the total force which will be applied which we have calculated above we calculated the total force that will be required to keep this in motion which is given here by mu l square g by 2 let us plug this in what i have now t of x minus mu g l square by 2 hence the tension acting at point x will be given by mu g by 2 l square minus x square so there is actually a simpler way to look at this problem what we could have done is that we could have just taken the rope starting from the point where we want the tension and we could just calculate 
whatever the force is required for the rest of the row this could actually be a much simpler way without all this integration but you notice that the linear density that we have it actually starts with the assumption that this is at zero and then you have an increasing linear mass density so if you start with the problem just like that you'll have to take that into account but th that is actually a much more interesting way of solving the problem so now we'll move on to uh, the last problem which is problem number 10 a5 q10 so what we have here is that we have a fixed circle this is a fixed vertical circle which is facing the entire gravitational force so you actually have you have a bead which is moving along this circle and it is facing gravity so what you will have is let me assume that this angle is theta and I will have the gravitational force mg which is acting downwards what I have to do in this problem is I have to find out what the equation of motion will be for this case see apart from the gravitational force acting you know that there is another force which is acting here which is given by the normal reaction the normal reaction will be in this direction okay so in order to get the equation of motion I need to figure out f first I figured out whatever the external forces are now I have to just write down the equation of motion in polar coordinates what is just writing down the equation I will get that radial acceleration will be given by m r double dot minus r phi dot square and m and the equation of motion for the tangential acceleration will be given by r phi double dot plus 2 r dot phi dot since we have a fixed vertical circle the radius is not changing so all r dot and r double dot will be equal to 0 so this will simplify as m a r will be equal to minus m r phi dot square and m a phi will be equal to m r phi double dot now just let us have a look at the free body diagram you will see that we want to take components of the external forces in the radial and the tangential direction so you have the normal reaction you have mg and then the directions that we are looking for are this these two right so n is in the radial direction there is no real issue but this fellow the weight in order to get that first we'll write down the component so this is theta in the radial direction I have mg cos of theta and in the tangential direction I have mg sine of theta so the equation of motion will just which is this fr f phi what is fr fr in the radial direction is n minus mg cos of theta will be equal to minus m r phi dot the whole square i think i have used two variables i can use uh, phi is actually equal to theta so let me replace all phi's by theta so this guy will now become theta dot square and for the tangential case I have f of theta which is equal to mg sine of theta which will be equal to m r theta double dot so this forms our equation of motion and r is the constant 
which is equal to capital R radius of the fixed circle. 